Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's May 19th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up today, huge news about the growth of renewable natural gas as Platts has announced the launch of two new first-in-type daily Platts North American renewable natural gas price assessments with the aim of bringing price transparency to this emerging market. Platts, part of S&P Global Commodity Insights, is the leading independent provider of information, analysis, data, and benchmark pricing for commodities, energy, and energy transition markets. Production of U.S. renewable natural gas has grown steadily since its inclusion in the Federal Renewable Fuel Standard, and interest in RNG will continue to expand as companies seek to reduce their carbon footprint. According to S&P Global Commodity Insights Planning Scenario Forecast, renewable natural gas supply will grow threefold to 2030 and as much as fivefold according to its more ambitious fast transition outlook to 2050. California is the first state in the U.S. to adopt a renewable gas standard and is a key consumer of renewable natural gas. Thus, Platts has announced two RNG price assessments, one that reflects California transport fuel market incentives when the transacted gas is consumed within California, and another that reflects RNG supply to consumers outside of California and thus does not include those additional state-level incentives. Staying in California, the city of Roseville just launched a brand new initiative to power its city vehicles. They're using wastewater and turning it into fuel. The so-called Energy Recovery Project has been in planning since 2016 and will be taking wastewater, converting it into methane, and putting it into a form that can fuel their waste collection fleet. Assistant Utility Director for the city, Devin Whittington, said, quote, It's a direct substitute for diesel or gas. We convert it to what they call a diesel gallon equivalent, and the plan will be to produce up to 1,000 gallons per day. It gives us long-term sustainability so we can forecast prices for the next 20 years, end quote. Currently, it's half the cost of diesel, so it will not only save the city money, but also the environment. Right now, the city of Roseville has about 14 renewable gas-powered trucks, but under this new program, plans to more than triple that by adding an additional 33. Traveling to the other end of the country now, the Maine Department of Environmental Protection is currently seeking public input as part of a review of the state's solid waste and recycling plan. In January 2024, the Maine DEP will release the most recent revision of the Maine Solid Waste Management and Recycling Plan. This statewide plan is carried out every five years. The most recent was released in 2019. The department is seeking public input for updating the waste plan and will be hosting a series of five regional stakeholder meetings as part of that stakeholder process. These meetings will be accessible either in person or remotely, ensuring all interested parties are able to participate. The department views this plan as an opportunity for open discussion and to solicit comments from residents, businesses, municipalities, and other stakeholders throughout the state about current efforts to support the state's solid waste management hierarchy. Plan discussion will focus on strategies and actions for the department and solid waste management entities to make progress toward Maine's statewide recycling, composting, and waste reduction goals. Waste plan meetings will take place from late June to early August of 2023 at University of Maine and University of Southern Maine campuses. And remember, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321 221- Two two three seven five zero zero. Moving to Vermont now, Governor Phil Scott is expected to sign the first extended producer responsibility legislation for household waste in U.S. history. 
Household waste refers to any consumer product which requires special handling once consumers are finished using them, such as products containing toxic or flammable ingredients. The bill, known as H-67, creates a statewide household waste EPR program, which will be managed and sustainably funded by the manufacturers of these products. Local governments will have the opportunity to participate in the program and be reimbursed by manufacturers for their costs and collection. They will also save money as transportation and processing costs are assumed by the manufacturers. Such programs have operated successfully in Canada since the 90s and, in the past few years, expanded to provinces based on that success. In Manitoba, collection volumes increased fourfold in the first five years of the program, and in British Columbia, more than 131,000 gallons of household waste were collected in 2017. Jin Holiday, Director of Public Policy and Communications for the Chittenden Solid Waste District, said, quote, H-67 is the first law in the United States that brings producers of the most toxic and consequently difficult and costly to manage portion of the waste stream to the table to develop a plan that creates cleaner land and water for all Vermonters. In addition, producers will now be incentivized to develop less toxic household products. End quote. Back out in the Midwest, elected officials of La Plata County, Colorado, are celebrating the passage of HB 23 1194, which is currently awaiting the signature of Governor Jared Polis. The legislation establishes a fund from which the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment will administer grants to local governments to assist in the environmental remediation for closed landfills. For years, La Plata County has clashed with state legislatures over the landfill, which it purchased in 1970. The facility ceased accepting waste in 1994 and was closed in compliance with state regulations at the time. But in the mid-2000s, groundwater monitoring detected elevated levels of vinyl chloride, a toxic compound ubiquitous to household items. The chemical's name splashed across newspapers in February when a train carrying the gas derailed in East Palestine, Ohio, raising concerns about environmental contamination. The La Plata landfill occupies about 15 acres, totaling an estimated 100,000 cubic yards of municipal waste. And lastly, Washington State Governor Jay Inslee signed a new law that will provide battery recycling across the state under a new producer responsibility program. The bill begins the program by recycling small, portable, primary, and rechargeable batteries first, starting January 1st, 2027. Then, beginning January 1st, 2029, medium format batteries will be included in the recycling program. Medium format batteries are primary batteries weighing more than 4.4 pounds, but not more than 25 pounds. And rechargeable batteries weighing more than 11 pounds, but not more than 25 Larger batteries will be subject to a study by the Washington State Department of Ecology that must be completed by July 1, 2027. Washington becomes the 10th jurisdiction to adopt a program stewardship program for batteries and is the most comprehensive. Most of the older laws only cover limited chemistries of batteries. In the last two years, D.C. and California passed similar laws but are limited to regulating smaller portable batteries. Washington law differs in that medium-sized batteries, such as those in e-bikes, scooters, and larger outdoor power equipment, are also to be included. Supporters call the new law, quote, landmark legislation that will put the state of Washington at the forefront of battery extended producer responsibility, end quote. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for May 19th, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back next week for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.